Okay, we're back with part two. I had to take a phone call, and so my video stopped. So now I cut it. And so there's going to be two parts to this video. Thank you, phone caller, for calling me and splitting up my thing, man. Um, but I was talking about textures and Silox spandexy. Uh, uniform and how um, I'm not quite done with her but you'll see that you know her uniform obviously is gonna be a lot darker if you know Psylocke you know this part of her uniform is usually really dark and then you have her skin to contrast it um, so I'm gonna ink her arm there and I'm gonna go in with a brush and just go you know nice and thick and because I know it's gonna be it's gonna be very black so I'm gonna go thicker on the under part because it's going to be in shadow. Okay, this is going to butt up against that. And I might want to go thicker. You want to get a good variety. Um, it just adds, you know, excitement to your to your piece when you can Get some good variety of lines, thickness, um, change up your thickness. Um, it just makes it more interesting. And then too, you gotta you gotta think where the light is. Um, if the light is from above, which is where I've been kind of creating my shadows and stuff, uh, I'm gonna want this to be about the middle. Close that off. And don't be afraid to leave some, you know, some white. Um, it just adds, you know, um, some variety. You, know, you got to spice it up a little bit sometimes, all right? So don't be afraid to do that. Uh, I'll come in here and add some feathering with my Micron. But, uh, so, again, you got your, your shadow underneath, the light part on top. And, you know, sometimes when you're dealing with, you know, like a spandexy character, you can choose to go black all the way to the edge. Um, I kind of leave it open so that way you have some underlighting and then, you know, you're overlighting um, your main light source and then underlighting. I just think it's um, adds a little different dimension to it. But, you know, to each his own. Um, but you'll see on the leg here you know I I didn't put the black all the way to the the edge there I'm leaving room for some under lighting and then again here here's your main light that's hitting the top of her leg and then this will be your base color uh, in the colors and so either way um, yeah sometimes if you you do your black all the way to the the edge it kinda brings the character out more um, but again it, it just depends on what what you're going for uh, and it's all up to you how you want to do it. Um, I like to kind of think of coloring and, and what's going to happen next. Just kind of leave it open. And then I could always change it later on if I want to, but you know. All right, all right. Cool. So there's her arm. And then obviously, you know, I'm kind of shading around the bones of her hand and, uh, that's what I'm doing there. Okay, now I'm gonna go back in again with the Micron and do the feathering. So definitely here where the wrist is meeting the hand. And then maybe some underneath. And I'm turning my paper so that way I can get the most comfortable spot for my brush stroke. And, or pen stroke, whatever. Um, so yeah. Cool deal, add some more over here. And what is feathering, you might ask? Um, feathering is, here's an example on this. This is my rough 
sheet where I can put it behind my paper if I'm doing uh, you know brush strokes that need to go to the edge. But here's a good example of feathering where it's you're you're going from dark to light, and so you know instead of just a black um, straight black, you know you can feather it and then get a, a gradient to go from black to light. So you're kind of um, you don't have such a stark contrast. You're you're adding a little bit of gray, basically, um, because you're dealing with ink. You're not dealing with a pencil. You kind of have to, you know, give the illusion of you know that 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 gradient there. So like here you go, black to light. So if you're using a pencil, you know you're shading it. You're going back and forth. You can go dark to light very easily. Um, but when you're working with ink, you kind of have to give the illusion of of that gray tone that you're looking for. So you know feathering is one way to do it. Um, down here, um, I used the brush and then I just kind of like went real fast and then went from dark to light, kind of like on the paper I showed you. Uh, but then I went back in and did some, some more lines with the micron. And again, you're just kind of giving that, that uh, illusion of, of gray tone, I guess you could say, with the ink. And so that is feathering. All right, so I'm going to go back over here to spiral and... I will need to look at her reference again because she's not a character I've drawn often, so I'll have to make sure I'm getting her costume and everything right. Um, she's got her pouches. Mm -hmm. And again here, I'm going thicker and darker because it is in shadow, it's underneath. Um, I have a, like a shadow underneath her, so I'm going to go, again, from light to dark, just, um, gradually getting my pen strokes closer, and then, there they are. So I've created a shadow on her. Her leg is underneath of her, so the shadow is going down on her leg. Bam, bada, bam. Bippy boo. And then if I wanted, I could throw a little extra cross hatching, because I'm going across the lines now, and I'm gonna add a little different dimension. So it's gonna push that part of her leg back farther into the, the space, make it more in shadow. And so that's that. Okay. Now, before I go any further, her swords are crossing in front of her, and her knees behind that, her leg there, so I'm not gonna go too crazy on that. Um, she has these kind of feathery boots on, so that's what that is, and then... Okay. Kind of feather it for real. And then, and again, I'm thinking dark to light, so I'm going thicker, and then I'm going thinner. So it's like I'm, you know, um, what's in the light is going to be smaller. Um, yeah, you get it. And then uh, what's in the shadow is thicker and darker, yada, yada, yada. Um, you know, and then and then too, I guess you're kind of with the the thinner lines, you're given the the illusion of detail. So like for instance, here on Psylocke's strap, you know, if I'm gonna get give some extra detail, I'm gonna go real thin. And because it's thin, it's like it's hard to see and you're you're saying basically this is in this is in the light. It's not in the shadow, it's in the light and it's very small. So it's I'm not going super thick. Um, if I want to go darker, I can just go over it again and do that. Okay. Um, I have to finish the strap behind her back, and what I'm going to do is on that strap, I'm going to put her sheath for her sword. So I'm going to go something like this.
So the strap is going through this, and then her sheath is connected to that. All right, and then the strap is going to connect to that, and I totally missed that line. I wanted to go to connect it so it's like twisting and it's getting smaller right there. But I totally failed on that one. But it's okay. Because that's what whiteout is for. Or sometimes you could just keep adding black and cover it up. But I can't because there ain't nothing to cover that with. So I'll fix it somehow. Um, and what I could do is, let me see here. This her sheath is gonna have some some character to it, so it's gonna have like lines. And then uh, I'm gonna color the strap because it's behind her, leaving the the connector part of the sheath open. Okay, and that'll kind of. Again, um, cast it back there behind her. It'll be in the shadow. And just by spacing out my, my shadows a little bit, I'm you know, adding just a different dimension and detail. Like so. So it's not all flat. Just adding some lines in there. So there's that. Okay. Now, honestly, if I didn't tell you that was the sheath of her sword, you probably wouldn't know. But I wanted to throw something on that strap because what's it for? What's its purpose? So let me see. If I can, I can maybe extend the top of it up here a little bit. But even then, it's going to be so small, it might just be like, oh, what is that? So. I may just leave it for now. We'll see. We'll see about that. Thinking that. Okay. Draw a there. Draw that edge. Okay. Do 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 do. All right, here. It's under her shoulder. It's going to her bicep. Get this away. You know, I think I might turn my desk around. On the underside of my desk, it's black, and I've always just kind of gone with the white, but. I think for streaming, the black might actually make the paper stand out more. And uh, I might need this actually. So I might do that when I have time. I'm gonna give it a try. All right. So those lines are too far apart, so I'm gonna darken them in. Um, I think that'll work. Yeah, that'll work. Even though it's thick, it kind of it's a good it's a good line. It'll work. Ain't worried about it. I'm using my eight. Let me go back to my five. I don't want that line to be super thick. And two, you have to watch with the uh, the microns. The older they get, sometimes the you know that that tip gets fatter, and so your lines might ac actually end up thicker than you really want. So just something. To Keep in mind, I tend to like go through these. Um, after I was doing the comic book, I noticed after I finished, you know, twenty something pages, it was like, okay, it's time to to get some new ones. Um, so you know, you want your your work to be its best, and so sometimes you gotta get new materials or whatever you call these things. Boo -doo -boo -doo 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 -doo. Mm 
<laughs> and you know, um, the quicker you go on your stroke, you can kind of get that thickness in. Uh, those thick to thin lines there. So that's kind of what I'm I'm trying to do. Some, you know, these microns are not they're not um, what do you call it? They're not nibs, you know. So you're kind of, but what I'm trying to do is give the the effect of the nib, the same kind of lines, you know. Um, so that's what I'm trying to do because the quality of line you get with the nibs is really is really nice. So I'm trying to. Do my best to get that without using it. Um, yeah, this arm is going to be in front of that arm. That line went too far beyond her bicep, so I'm going to have to I'll hide that in the sheath that's behind her there. Um, okay, so six arm woman here. Her shoulder. It's not perfect anatomy, but it'll work. Her shoulder's coming out of her side there. There you go. Um, okay. Shading on there. Some of this, her arms underneath here, I'm gonna have to throw down some shading, just kind of differentiate between her hair and everything else that's going on. So that is coming. Now I'm working with my three. I'm probably gonna want to go thicker, so I could switch to a five, so I don't have to keep going over these lines, or I could just go over the lines again and again, which is what I probably will do. And sorry if I'm going off the page or at a screen. Uh... All right, so on this leg, it's back farther. Um, so I might just do some something like that. Cool deal. The sheath will be in front of that back back leg, so I'm gonna draw that in. And I'm so bad about I just like skip around everywhere. I don't really finish one area. I don't know why. That's what I do. And sometimes I've I've because I'm skipping around, I'll like ink something that should be in the foreground, or excuse me, something that is in the background, and uh, I cover up something that's in the foreground, and I'm like, crap. So that's why I did that sword first, just to make sure that's out of the way, and then I can focus on on her and stuff. So it happens. All right. So this sword is not correct either, but. Gonna wing it. I'm out of the frame. I apologize. I need to hold on a second. Let me move this camera down. There we go. All right, that's where it's comfortable for me. Yeah, yeah, and I know I'm I'm not live, and I again I do apologize. I need to, like I said, I'm, I got to set up Streamlabs on my tablet, and when I do that, I can start doing live stuff again. Um, but if you have any questions, feel free to you know ask me in the comments. I will be sure to answer them for you. Um, any, um, you know, art questions or whatever. Just shoot them my way. I will answer them for you. If you want to critique me, go for it. If you want to tell me how stupid I am, go for it. Or if I should be doing something different, because, you know, like, 
You say, Eric, dude, why aren't you using these pens? These pens are awesome. Go for it. Tell me. I'll check it out. Anything to make my job easier, I'm all for it. And again, like I said, I tried using the nibs today, the 102 Speedball nib. And uh, I noticed it's very thin. It'd probably be great for inking stuff in a background, but... But I have like, you know, I have my 02, I got my 01, I got my 005, and I'm just, I'm comfortable with these pens, and so I'd much rather go with what I know, and, um, you know, kind of don't have to worry about the risk of screwing it up. Um, but yeah, I wish I was better at those things, man, because, you know, I see some other inkers, and I see the lines that they're able to get and everything, and I'm like, yeah, it's so nice. Um, and I'm just over here using my my microns, but it's all good. When I get real good, I'll just hire somebody. <laughs> I'll pencil and ink and ink, because I'm I'm a penciler. I'm not really, you know, an inker. Yes, I could do it, but I'd much rather focus on penciling and. Uh, and just do that, but, you know, it is what it is. I'm used to doing this, and that's what I do. Um, I did, I had my friend, uh, William Wolford. He inked, um, the book I was working on, the, the comic. So he did digital inks, and, um, I did kind of like roughs, um, would you call them roughs? No, I mean, it, it was pretty tight, actually, um, I did, like, smaller pages, eight and a half by 11, and I did, you know, pretty semi-tight, uh, inks, so I would, I would do this, I would ink it, but more, you know, quicker, I wasn't quite concerned about every line, but, um, and then I'd shoot it off to him, and then he would ink it digitally, and then, Kablam! Had our completed pages. So that was a cool um, experience working with an inker and uh, helping him out with stuff as well. So there we go. All right, let me do that sheath. And uh, I was able to work with Mike Miller on the Meg comic. I did the ba the background inks for him on that, so that was kind of cool. You know, I don't really consider myself an inker, but um, I was able to work with him on that project. And got my name in a book as a background assistant inker, so that's kind of cool. I'll take it. Spacing out these little lines to show that there are um, there's gonna be some crossing lines on there. So let me see. Hmm. How do I want to do this? Hmm. <laughs> I could just draw the lines and I kind of have like, you know, X's crossing lines going across there on the sheath. I could do that, or I can... Hmm. What I could do is I could just do it all black and then go over it with a um, one of these guys. Uh, what is that called? I don't even know. I lost my train of thought. I dropped something. Oh, my eraser. So... Um, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? I'm just going to draw the lines. And I'm going to use an 8 because I want them to be thick. Um, whiteout pen. That's it. Whiteout pen. Do a whiteout pen. But these I'm just going to draw. Try to get close as I can to those lines I left. Cross them. Uh, 
There we go. Oh, that's cool. Snake like. It's cool. It's interesting. All right. Um, like I mentioned, I am gonna do uh, add some darkness in here. So you got six arms. One of them's got to be in the back. So this middle one, I think, is the one I put in the back or in between them. But I want to do some shadow in there. Um, but first, ink her boot. Yeah, yeah, the trash man's here. I can hear him. Okay, so like I did on this boot, again, it's kind of like, um, they're not feathers, it's kind of like that wooly, you know, kind of look on her on her boots, um, hair, whatever. She slayed some animal, she's got some hairy boots. Um, I'm going to go darker on the underside. Like a debt. Like a dot. Cool. All right. I could make her foot black too. Mm, not quite sure. But uh, I think that'll work for now. Okay. Next. Um. Do do do. My phone power is low. Let me see what how much I got. Seven percent left. Okay. So I'll try and make it to. Uh, I'll go thirty minutes on this video and then I'll call it a day on that but uh let me see how much more i get done i gotta look at a at a reference again for spiral because i need to know if there's any other designs on the front of her shirt there um let me draw some muscle here she's muscly all right gonna ink this hand here Right. You know there's four knuckles. You know whose fingers I always loved? The Ninja Turtles. They got three of them. But, uh, there's something about the Ninja Turtles' fingers. I used, when I was a kid, I would, you know, draw them. And then, uh, in the, uh, the coloring books and stuff, you know, you'd see their fingers, and there's just something about the way they drew them. It was just kind of like, it was cool. But, uh, as an artist, uh, Mike Miller told me, you want to be good at faces and hands, because those are, um, two of the things you're going to draw the most. And when, uh, as an artist, when you're showing stuff to editors and everything, they want, they look at that. They want to see how well you do faces and hands and uh, I could uh, maybe I'll do it in the next video I was reading some old comics from the 90s some image comics and um, I'm looking at these artists and one of the things I noticed is that their backgrounds were like really good they're amazing um, their shading and shadowing and just the detail is like incredible, right? But then, um, you look at their faces and some of the, the pictures, right? And it's like, you're like, what the heck? Like some of the stuff is off and it, you know, it didn't look like the same character, uh, as they drew two panels ago and it's supposed to be the same character. And so like, you know, little things like that, um, I was just kind of like, hmm. You know, not saying I'm perfect, but it was just something I picked up on. So you want to be good at doing faces and hands. It's important. And it's good to be able to draw muscly characters and good women's, but if you can't draw 
good believable faces, expressions on the faces, you need to practice. Need to practice. Alright, so there's that. My phone is dying. Oh, I'm at the 30 minute mark. Look at that. And my phone is almost dead. Cool. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this time. I enjoyed it. <laughs> Not really. Um, <laughs> I wish I was live. I wish I could like actually talk to people instead of talking to myself. That's not super fun. But I hope this was important to you with the help of the uh, inkingness that I offered. Yes, sir. Um, so there you go. Let me see if I can back up a little bit. Give you the full image. Boom. There you go. Sorry, most of this, you know, stream, you're probably like, oh, whoa, I can't really see what's going on. But, yep, that's where I'm going to stop here. I'll do another one and um, finish up and stuff. Do some hair. Show you how I handle hair and all that good stuff. But anyway, thanks for hanging out. Uh, be sure to follow and subscribe to my channel, Eric Nolotowski Art. I do have ericknolotowskiart.com. I have a store. You can get t-shirts, prints. I have metal prints, blah, 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 yippity yip. And yeah, uh, comment on my video if you have any questions or maybe a topic that you would like me to help you with, if you would like my help. Um, I don't know it all. I just share what I do know and I make up the rest. So thank you guys. Um, what else? Check out Shadow Century, Indiegogo. Type in Shadow Century, you'll see the pre-campaign. It's going to launch the end of February. I'm super excited. And as soon as I'm done this commission, I will start doing some pages and stuff. So I'll show you how I do my breakdowns of pages and then blow it up and ink it and all that good stuff. So I got to get at least five pages done before I launch. So that is my goal and a cover. And I will share stuff as I can. Follow me on Twitter, Eric Nintowski Art. I'm on Instagram as well. And Facebook, all Eric Nintowski Art. Thank you, guys. Peace out. Bye-bye.